Hi, this is Charles with AnnieCap. In today's film, we will be telling you the story of the high-tech teen drama, Summer Wars. In the not-so-distant future, the world is connected by a virtual space called Oz. People from all over the world gather in Oz. Their language is translated instantly. Oz is a place where communities, governments, and commerce all come together. Users have their true identities hidden and are protected by two computer programs, John and Yoko, symbolized as whales. In the midst of Oz, a young programmer named Kenji does his job as a maintenance programmer for Oz along with his friend Takashi. They complain about work and their boss rides them hard. They are determined to get new jobs and have a good summer meeting lots of girls. And who should arrive but Natsuki, a girl offering a job? The job is simple. Take Natsuki back to her hometown. Out in Oz, someone with an avatar in the form of an anthropomorphic rabbit makes a name for themselves as a master martial artist. At the same time, Kenji goes along with Natsuki. They talk on the trip about how Natsuki is going to see her great-grandmother for her birthday. She also gets Kenji to share how he was nearly Japan's representative in the Math Olympics. As they get closer to Natsuki's hometown, they begin to pick up her relatives. Her mom, her aunt, and her cousin all tell Kenji about how their family dates back hundreds of years and have a well-known silk trade. Or they did until Natsuki's grandfather squandered its money. Kenji arrives at Natsuki's hometown. It is actually her family's massive ancient estate. As he is marveling at everything around him, he is led to the room of Sake. There, Natsuki explains to Sake that Kenji is her fiance. Kenji is just as surprised as Sake at this. Sake grills Kenji on whether or not he is man enough to care for and even die for her great granddaughter. Kenji says he is. Pleased at this, Sake gifts Natsuki with a beautiful yukata. Outside, Natsuki explains that Sake is getting old and sick. Natsuki promised Sake that she'd bring her boyfriend so Saka could meet him before she died. But Natsuki didn't have a boyfriend, so she had to improvise. Kenji had never had a girlfriend, so it's all a shock to him. The rest of Natsuki's family begins to arrive. There are more than a dozen aunts, uncles, cousins, and kids. At dinner, Kenji has trouble keeping up with them all. Many of them are rude and pushy, particularly Shoda, Natsuki's second cousin. He grew up expecting to marry Natsuki. An uncle named Mansuki entertains the dinner party with the story of their samurai ancestor's valiant defense of the region in which they settled. After dinner, Natsuki plays with her family's kids while Kenji talks on the phone with Takashi. Takashi urges Kenji to sleep with Natsuki. Kenji is too awkward to accept the idea. He just wants the summer to be over. He gets lost in the massive house and ends up finding an odd family member sitting at a computer by themselves. It is a young man and he quickly tells Kenji to leave, to which Kenji abides. He finds his way back to the family just as the black sheep of the clan arrives, Wabisuke. Nobody likes him but the dog. Wabisuke calls Sake an old hag. They both express bitter surprise that the other is alive. Even after this exchange, Sake offers him dinner. He turns it down but does begin drinking. Natsuke sees Wabisuke and runs over to him. She tackles him into a hug because she loves him and he has been gone for 10 years. The family then discusses Wabisuke. Many of them don't consider him family. He is the bastard son of the grandfather who squandered the family's money. Wabisuke and Natsuki play a game of koi koi. Wabisuke promises to talk about himself if Natsuki wins. Wabisuke wins, however. Kenji lies in bed wondering what he's doing there. Just then, he gets a text message. It seems to be an incomprehensible series of numbers with the subject line, Solve This. Kenji stays up late, writing in a notebook by moonlight. He successfully deciphers its message and responds to the sender with it. The sender sends back a jack-in-the-box image that scares Kenji. The next morning, Kenji is awoken by a pair of kids that drag him in front of the TV. The news is reporting on a hacker that managed to break into Oz. Oz is in disarray and all of the connections it established are broken. And for some reason, they believe it was Kenji that did it. Kenji unplugs the TV and tries to log into Oz. He can't, so he finds the kid on the computer from the night before. Kenji kindly asks the kid if he can use his computer. The kid eventually lets him, even though he knows he might be a criminal. That is when Kenji finds his account has been stolen. Someone comes with a phone call for Kenji. It's Takashi. Turns out that the code Kenji solved was his security key for Oz. Takashi provides Kenji with a guest avatar to get into Oz. Kenji goes into Oz and confronts the person who stole his avatar. The thief responds by punching Kenji's avatar in the face. This isn't supposed to be possible, but Takashi's avatar appears to inform Kenji of a startling discovery. The rules have been rewritten. All of Oz is a battlefield now. Kenji is getting beat up, so the boy Kenji met steps in. Turns out that the boy Kenji met last night was Kazuma, the rabbit martial artist. 
Kazuma chases down the thief and seizes him. The thief is no match for Kazuma, but Kazuma gets distracted by his family in the real world and the thief is able to slip away. The thief runs through Oz, devouring other people's avatars and growing in size. This causes the thief to transform. Suddenly, the thief is able to keep up with Kazuma. Not only that, he beats Kazuma. Kenji is barely able to get Kazuma away before the thief can consume him as well. Over the phone, Takashi informs Kenji that the thief is actually a rogue hacking AI called Love Machine. Not long after, the family he had been staying with discovers that Kenji has been accused of hacking Oz. Not only that, Natsuki's family did some digging. Nothing Natsuki said about him was true. Shota, being a cop, gets ready to arrest Kenji, but Sake wants to know if he really did all those bad things. Kenji says he didn't do it and thanks the family for having him. He spends most of his time alone so it was really fun for him. Then Shota arrests Kenji and takes him away. In Oz, Love Machine starts messing with infrastructure. GPS gets disrupted. Gas, water, and electricity services all begin to malfunction. People's schedules get confused. Natsuki comes and picks up Kenji and Shota since miles of traffic are keeping them from going anywhere and they are forced to return to the family home. Takashi explains the situation to Natsuki. Love Machine stealing people's accounts is like stealing all their personal power. If it steals a principal's power, it can cancel school. With a mayor's power, it can shut down a city. With the president's power, it could launch nukes. Seeing the world fall apart, Sake steps into action. She begins calling relatives, all of her relatives, sons and daughters, grandchildren, nieces and nephews, everyone she has ever known. She orders them to prioritize saving human lives and keeping in direct contact with each other. Kenji and Natsuki are amazed by Sake's coordination and connections. Meanwhile, Kenji works on breaking back into Oz. He is able to solve the new encryption key and get back in, locking Love Machine out in the process. Kenji celebrates the victory against Love Machine with Natsuki's family. Over the news, they hear that even though Love Machine is locked out of Oz, many accounts are still compromised. Kazuma is sure that Love Machine will return, but optimistic that it can be stopped. Wabiski says that that's not possible, and he reveals that he is the designer of Love Machine. It's not something so advanced as an artificial intelligence. All it knows is a thirst for knowledge. Sake is upset with Wabiski, so he apologizes to her for causing trouble. He was doing it to restore the family to their former prosperity. He shows her the offer he got from the US Army. They bought Love Machine and tested its abilities on Oz. It surpassed all expectations. Wabiske thanks Sake as he was only able to develop Love Machine due to the money she gave him. Sake attacks Wabiske with a naginata and commands him to die. Wabiske then leaves. Kenji helps Sake to her room and she invites him to play Koi Koi. She tells him that Natsuki is confident but foolish and asks Kenji to take care of her. Kenji is unconfident but Sake believes in him. The next morning, Sakai never wakes up because she had died in her sleep. It turns out that Sakai had a pacemaker that her doctor monitored through Oz. Love Machine uses connection to stop Sakai's heart. The family wants Wabiske's head, but he left. Natsuki is heartbroken and Kenji does his best to comfort her. The family argues about the funeral. Kenji, Kazuma, and Takashi set about preparing to battle Love Machine. They take inspiration from the family's militant past and make a plan of attack. One relative borrows a supercomputer from a university. Another brings his fishing boat to power it. Yet another provides ice to cool the machine. And one brings an advanced communications antenna. They challenge Love Machine to a duel with the intent to trap him. The battle is pitched, but they lure Love Machine into part of Oz that loops infinitely. The supercomputer contains Love Machine in a boundless space, an Oz within an Oz. This process is incredibly taxing on the supercomputer. It rapidly begins to overheat and all of their ice was taken by Shota for the funeral. The supercomputer breaks down and Love Machine breaks free from the prison. It defeats Kazuma and asserts complete control over Oz. Love Machine issues a two hour countdown. At the end of the countdown, it will deorbit a satellite and bring it down on one of Japan's nuclear power plants, triggering a meltdown. Natsuki calls Wabiske and tells him that Sake has been killed by Love Machine and soon it will kill all humans just for fun. Wabiske returns to take responsibility for his creation. Kenji realizes that everything Love Machine does is for fun, so Kenji suggests playing a game against it. It is decided that Natsuki will play Koi Koi against Love Machine with a wager. If Love Machine wins, he gets control over every account in Oz. If Natsuki wins, Love Machine self-terminates. As Natsuki plays against Love Machine, Wabiske begins disassembling its defenses. People from all over the world give their accounts to Natsuki for the gamble. 
The stakes are high, but Natsuki is able to gamble Love Machine down from 500 million accounts to just two. The countdown stops. Everyone celebrates, but Love Machine is a sore loser and has one more trick up its sleeve. Before it gives up its control over the satellite, it changes its course. Instead of hitting a nuclear power plant, it plans on crashing into the family's home. Kenji fights to redirect the satellite as far away as he can, but is thwarted by Love Machine at every step. Wabisuke and Kazuma are able to disable Love Machine long enough for Kenji to redirect the satellite away from the family home, but just barely. The satellite crashes and destroys most of the estate, but no one is injured. The next day, everyone celebrates the late Sake's birthday. Wabisuke is welcomed back into the family, and Kenji finally confidently professes his love for Natsuki. She reciprocates and they live happily ever after. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment with what anime movie you'd like me to recap next.